Hey everyone and welcome back to the Flower City False Leads coverage of the Rochester Regional that happened on May 30th, 2015. Uh, this is Tim and I'm going to be with you today for the finals in the losers bracket where we've got Pat here on the left playing Engineering the Future and Dean on the right playing Valencia. Uh, we just saw Pat in the last round beat out Rob to get here and Dean a few games ago dropped a game to Ben to land himself down in the losers bracket. And so, of course, Engineering the Future, getting that credit every time they install a card, uh, gives them a pretty robust economy, along with all of the EVE campaigns and Adonis campaigns and all that stuff. And then on the other side, Valencia, who, of course, starts with that bad pub, so makes her runs very efficient, lets her have blackmail online straight away, and so makes things a little challenging to get down into remotes unless you've got an Ash or a Caprice or something like that protecting it. So Pat just icing up essentials, getting a little bit of money, and likely either waiting for his kind of fast advance pieces, if he's doing that, or ways to defend his remotes from blackmail. And Dean just playing out a bunch of econ operations, getting it, Cotty Jones going, so he's pretty well set for a little while here. And it looks like Jackson Howard, apologies again for the glare on the left side of the table, so I'll try to call cards out as they come up. So put down Jackson Howard, draw up, play a hedge fund there from Pat. Dean immediately goes in and gets rid of Jackson. Uh, you want to get rid of that draw power as soon as you can. And it looks like Pat had thrown an agenda in the bin there. One of the, the shards, I think. So it looks like he's playing three-pointers. So he is looking to score out of probably deep remotes, which means he's going to have to find something to defend him from blackmail before he goes for a score, unless he's feeling ballsy. And a restrike. So Pat's economy looking pretty good here, although Dean's is looking pretty good as well with that loaded up Jones. And drawing up with an I've had worse. Probably not expecting a kill out of this deck. This is before uh, Marcus Batty came out and everybody tried to kill you out of HB. And it looks like Wildside and Adjusted Chronotype are down, meaning he'll be getting two cards a turn for no clicks, which is hard to pass up. Another remote going in for Pat there. So Pat, yeah, sitting on a pretty large stack of credits here. Although Dean is now right back in it and is going to be getting a large amount of draw. So putting down the Mimic, which is largely, I'm assuming, to defend against Architect. And he smacks into a toll booth instead. Which the Bad Pub makes the the smack into toll booth slightly less painful than it normally would be. So saves Dean a little money and hits an Eli on R&D. So Pat back down a little on credits, but he's pretty well defended. Looks like a Sand Sand there he just drew, which is going in the remote there with that boot camp. So he is looking to fast advance out a little bit, it looks like. That's what I found usually when I'm playing HB, is you can score an agenda or two in a remote, but at some point you usually have to advance, fast advance something out with either Sand Sand or Biotic Labor. Ooh, and his hand is looking pretty juicy. So if it looks like five points of agendas in there. And Parasite going down on the remote ice. And then just dirty laundering archives. And so it's been interesting to see how these Valencia decks have evolved. Right when she came out, everybody was just trying to figure out the way they could play the most black males in a row. But now she's kind of developed into, oh, look, Anarch has all of this good stuff. We can use that and have a bed pub on top of it. Oh, and that was the next silver that got parasited down. So this is ends up being the problem with these next-based HB decks is that you just parasite out the silvers and then things are very tough after that because then, especially Anarch, they'll probably have Yogg and they can just Yogg past the next bronze, all the next silvers dead, and uh, next gold then loses its teeth a little bit as well. Clone chip comes down and he does blackmail the remote, likely looking to just clear out whatever is sitting there. He knows it's not an agenda because there's that boot camp sitting there, but does want to get rid of 
whatever is being dropped into there. And it looks like Pat is still sitting on two agendas in hand, but he does have a toll booth sitting in front of there. So Dean would either need to burn it down with a parasite or get his Yog up and a whole bunch of data suckers. And decides to get rid of the boot camp as well. Which, now that he knows Pat's playing Sand Sand, seems like a, a pretty fair, fair bet. And... Yeah, he has two boot camps, which is going to make life a little rough for Valencia here. So he's able to get a toll booth up on the remote over there and drop something in, which is likely the Vitruvius we saw in his hand earlier. So things looking pretty good for Pat right now. Dean drops the Parasite immediately onto that toll booth, knowing that eventually he's going to want to burn it down. Looks like he has a data sucker in hand. And that Ottman, so uh, he's a little low on money. So otherwise, it would probably be tempting to drop the Ottman and go for it. Instead, puts down a data sucker, runs archives, hits an architect, has the money, uses bad pub there, grabbing up some data sucker counters. And yeah, Pat goes for the score out. Project Vitruvius, putting him at two points. He is a little low on money, and his ice is rapidly burning down here. Uh, so this is usually how Valencia operates. You give away an early agenda, maybe, unless you have a, a blackmail way to get into the server. But then your late game, like so many of the Anarchs, just becomes overwhelming, where you're parasiting down all the ice, you can get through everything incredibly cheaply, and then you get a medium or two online, and things get dire pretty fast. So another clone chip comes down, which is almost always used to recur those parasites. Okay, we see the first one of the campaigns come up. That's the Eve campaign, which against Valencia is a little less rough to take down uh, because she's got that bad pub. So four credits to deny them 14 credits seems like a pretty fair trade. And something else drops into that remote. I couldn't see quite what it was. I don't know if it's another agenda. Although that would be pretty risky at this point, since the toll booth is going to burn down in the near future. Yeah, it looks like what Dean is going for. Runs archives two times to get some data sucker counters, then runs the remote and burns it down. So let's see what Pat went for here. And it was just an ash, which. I would think you definitely want to get rid of because that makes blackmailing into there pretty challenging if Pat can get a money lead. So that's kind of the double-edged sword of the, the boot camps here is that they let you res up the ice so that you can't get blackmailed on, but then once the ice is resed, it lets uh, Dean drop a parasite on there. Oh, and cannot do that. I, I attempted to do the same thing myself during the tournament. Someone had gotten a knight onto uh, an architect. I was like, aha, I'm getting rid of this guy's knight. And then he pointed out that that was impossible. And I, I was sad. And just loading up on money, it looks like. And Pat pops up a mother goddess with the boot camp, which at this point has all of the ice subtypes. So he will get through it. Dean will get through it in the most efficient way he can. But it is still something to protect a remote. Especially if he can get some kind of defensive asset in there. Or defensive upgrade, I mean. Unloads <laughs> Jones. Sure gambles up. Let's see prepping here. Both sitting on 10 credits, so both the runner and the Corp Econ are coming in pretty nicely here. And pass his turn. What is Pat grabbing here? Yeah, again, sorry about the glare here. I did not realize until after the fact that we were sitting directly under a fluorescent light here. 
oh, it looks like he would get blacklist. And so Dean, as soon as he sees the blacklist get searched for, immediately pops the parasite using one of the clone chips. And it looks like the blacklist is going into that remote there. Which I wonder if the blacklist is just him trying to shut down parasite recursion or if there are destroyers in the deck that he's hoping to take out a crucial piece. I don't think we've seen any yet, uh, but if he's running the next step, then there is a pretty fair chance the next goal is in there and maybe an Ichi or something like that. So, Dean looking like he's sitting on an Otman, a Data Sucker, Corroder, and a Medium, a couple other things in hand. So he could have, so he drops the Otman at four. Uh, looks Because the, there's a Mother Goddess on the table, there's an Eli. Uh, if more toll booths come up, it takes just a single Data Sucker counter to get it down to the Otman range. And just HP in general runs a lot of strength for ice. So always a good call, sending it at four against HP. So straight away runs in, trashes the blackmail so that he can get those parasites going again. So Pat knew that Dean could get in there, uh, but it's just attacks there as well. It forces out the Otman at four and costs him a run and some money down there to trash the blackmail. Okay, and he drops what I think was a project for Trubius into the remote there. Daring, daring Dean to see whether he has a blackmail in hand or a way to get it back. And it looks like he does have a deja vu there. So, yep, deja vu's to get black the, back the blackmail and throws it on that server. He knows he can get through the Mother Goddess at the bottom. Oh, yes. And, yeah, so we see the blackmail on the remote. Can't res, breaks the Mother Goddess with a bad pub, and steals a Vitruvius for two points. And so this is always the quandary against Valencia, is you can't play the entire game like she has blackmail in hand, but you have to be aware that it's always a possibility, I suppose. Uh, oh, and that was a, an NAPD, which Pat immediately drops into the remote there. And again, the bad pub means he does have to advance it five times the score, so that's why we see him drop the double advancement there. And Dean is at fairly low money. He could, I guess, recur the, the blackmail again if he ha can draw into a deja vu. Oh, and he draws directly into a blackmail. But, yeah, I guess at this point, though, he's not sure that's an NAPD because the uh, the bad pub, it could be an NAPD or it could be any of the three-pointers that we know Pat is running. And so this is likely what Dean is thinking about here, whether... He should blow a blackmail here when he might not be able to steal at the bottom. But he goes for it. And ends up one credit short because he uses the bad pub to break the Mother Goddess. So that was the perfect window for Pat to draw an NAPD there off the top. That would have been any other agenda. That would have been a very risky move. And that Adonis, he's, uh, Dean has let that Eve there just tick all the way down, so that's given Pat a lot of nice economy, and he scores out the NAPD. So we know he's running three-pointers. It's only one score away from a win here for Pat. It's going to be probably a pretty challenging score, but nonetheless, he's only one agenda away from the victory here. Dean sitting on two points. He's been holding that medium for a while, and he's got the Ottman four. So at some point, we'll likely see that going off. And Desperado. So we see the chunk of Dean's influence here is Desperado's clone chips and Otman. And yeah, the combination of the Desperado and the bad publicity makes it runs just so brutally efficient. And runs R&D. Looks like he clicks through Eli. Oh no, it does not click through right. Yeah, the bad pub and the Desperado means he can run R&D for free. And then runs and burns down the toll booth on HQ. 
and that's an Eli, which at this point, yeah, is does not do a whole lot for Pat since the the Ottoman Four is out, the Bad Pub, the Desperado. Dean taking a look there through the archives. Anarch, of course, running has a lot of recursion in faction, and they almost always import clone chip. Clone chip is one of those cards I feel like was almost an anarch card, but they had to make it in another faction so that all anarchs couldn't just have that plus everything else. There's a few cards like like Cash, for example, that you know is clearly wants to be an anarch card, but ends up as a criminal card with some influence. Which is a nice balancing mechanism, though. Okay, so Pat is sitting on the winning three-pointer in hand there. But I do not think has a way of getting it out at this point. So we haven't seen too much of Pat's influence. Just a few toll booths, a couple boot camp, I guess toll booths, boot camps, and the blacklist. So I don't know if he's running Caprice. Or what his uh, his upgrades are. Okay, so Dean's still getting that lovely wild side pancakes, free two, and running in an R and D. Ooh, and he grabs a Vitruvius, so four points. R and D is free to run. And gains him data sucker and medium counters. So at this point for Pat, he's yeah he's got a got a Ari Star and D. There is no other option. And Dean is sitting on two. He will be at six with the daily cast. So again, installing into the remote is tough since it'll now be a win for Dean as well. And just shoring up R and D. Yeah, you got to play to not lose first as the corp before you can play to win, I suppose. So Pat shoring up his defenses. Not throwing on H anything on HQ. It's likely to try to draw Dean away from there since the winning agenda is in hand. And he goes straight in on R&D. Pops the clone chip for, I'm guessing, a Parasite. Using the bad pub. Parasite's down that next silver. And smacks headlong into an next bronze, which at this point he can't get into. And so instead he plays another parasite on the next bronze and runs again. So yeah, the, the parasite recursion engine is humming like a top and still getting free R&D access, building up medium. So that is pretty painful. You install two ice over there, think you're saving yourself for a little bit, and they're both dead immediately. So this is, yeah, that point in the game where things get a little rough for Pat. Okay, but that is a, a next silver that gets to live for a little while on HQ. And looks like he's puts a Turing over R&D, which is not ideal, but it's what you've got to do when he doesn't have any way to break code gates. Deja vuing for <laughs> parasites. <laughs> parasites, the silver runs, and this could be the game. Oh, one and two to end the game here, and he hits the Eli instead. Luck is on Pat's side for low, oh, but he goes and dirty laundries in. So again, one and two for the game, and that's it. So Dean takes home the victory here. Pat was looking good initially, got out to an early lead, had a remote set up, but then the Parasites just got online and runs got very efficient for Dean. So Pat is eliminated since we're down here in the loser's bracket, and Dean will be moving on to the final where he's going to face Ben, who we saw a few rounds ago, knocked Dean down to the loser's bracket. So we'll have a rematch between those two guys for the title in just a little bit. So guys, shaking hands, very cordial, of course. Uh, so thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in a little bit for the grand finals. So long.